This video is part of a series in which I'm taking a dive into famous baseball players that are typically associated with one team. But what if they never actually played for that team? Stick with me and I'll tell you the story about what could have been. What is going on everybody? Thanks for joining me on my channel, Brutus on Baseball once again. I'm continuing in my video series again today all about baseball players that are associated with one primary team. But how could history have looked different if they had never signed with that team or signed with a different team instead? And today we're going to move forward with a story about the player that inspired this whole video series for me. And that player is Roberto Clemente. Now, Roberto Clemente is an icon, much like Jackie Robinson paved the way for African-American players to play in Major League Baseball. Clemente was seen as a player who paved the way for the future stars from Latin America. Clemente hailed from Puerto Rico and was Latin America's first and greatest star, signing as a 19-year-old out of the Puerto Rican Winter League, where he had learned from older Negro League players that were at the tail end of their career and were too late to try their own hand in Major League Baseball, so they played in the Caribbean Winter Leagues instead. Clemente was a fantastic all-around player and was well known for being a bad ball hitter decades before Vladimir Guerrero came along to do the same thing. And Clemente was also known for having the strongest cannon of an arm in right field, an arm that was strengthened as a teenager growing up from participating in the javelin throw in track and field, where it was thought for a time that he could actually represent his country in the Olympics. He could do it all on the baseball field though, finishing with a career 317 batting average, 3,000 hits on the nose, along with a 130 OPS plus and 95 war. Not only was Clemente a great player, but he was also an incredible role model and human being, with his kindness and constant quest to help other people in need. It was this lifelong mission to help that led to his untimely death in a plane crash on New Year's Eve of 1972, while organizing a relief effort to help the people of Nicaragua recover from a devastating earthquake. Clemente died at the tender young age of only 38 years old. But Clemente's name will always be synonymous with the Pittsburgh Pirates, the team for which he played his entire career of 18 seasons, the same team that he represented 12 seasons at the All-Star Game, and where he also won 12 Gold Glove Awards, four batting titles, and an MVP award in 1966. But could you even imagine Roberto Clemente wearing the jersey of another team instead of the Pirates? Do you know how close it came to happening? You see, it wasn't the Pirates that had signed Clemente out of the Puerto Rican League. It was the Brooklyn Dodgers who beat out the New York Giants and Milwaukee Braves to sign him. Clemente was excited to sign with the Dodgers too, even though the Braves had offered him more money because of the Puerto Rican population he knew would be in New York. The Dodgers signed him for a $5,000 salary and a $10,000 signing bonus. And why that was so important was because the rules at the time required any player paid more than $4,000 to be kept on the major league roster or his team would risk losing him in a draft that was held every offseason for players that were highly paid but couldn't find a spot on the team's major league roster. That meant the Dodgers could either put Clemente in Brooklyn, where he would likely ride the pine for the first two years, or they could send him to the minor leagues, where he was at risk of being drafted by another team the next offseason. The Dodgers chose to send Clemente to play in Montreal, the same place where they had sent Jackie Robinson less than a decade earlier, and by doing so, risking the chance of losing Clemente. There's a lot of rumors about Clemente's time in Montreal, rumors that the Dodgers sent him down to begin with at the advice of Jackie Robinson himself, who allegedly said that bringing up another black ball player to replace a less talented white player could hurt the morale of the team. Also rumors that the Dodgers played Clemente only sparingly while in Montreal, trying to hide him from other teams and were therefore less likely to draft him at the end of the season. But when he did play, Clemente struggled, which makes sense for a 19-year-old playing in his first professional season. And it was said that his strike zone judgment was so poor that he would swing wildly at pitches far out of the strike zone, and the opposing pitchers would regularly make him look foolish. 
Whatever was the truth, that Clemente was being hidden or just progressed at his own pace, he turned a corner in late July of that season and found his groove, making an impact with his bat, his arm, and his glove through the final month of the 1954 season. By the end of the season, it was obvious to the Dodgers brass that several other teams were interested in drafting Clemente. The Pirates had the worst record in 1954, giving them the first pick of the draft. But the Dodgers general manager, Buzzy Bevesi, had a plan. If he could convince the Pirates to draft another player from the Montreal roster, he would be able to keep Clemente because of the rule that only one player could be drafted from each minor league team. The Pirates were being run by that time by the great branch rookie, the Dodgers' former general manager who had actually signed Jackie Robinson in 1946. And in between that time, he had been squeezed out by Walter O'Malley and the Dodgers' ownership group to join the Pirates' front office instead in 1950. Branch Ricky and Buzzy Bevesi had maintained a good friendship, and Ricky owed him a favor. So when Bevesi called and asked Branch to draft a different player only a few days before the draft, Branch Ricky accepted and settled on selecting a pitcher, John Rutherford, from the Montreal Royals roster instead. But in the two days between that agreement and the draft, Bevesi later learned that Branch Rickey and Walter O'Malley had gotten into another spat, where, quote, it seems O'Malley called Branch Rickey every name in the book. And as a result of that argument and Branch Rickey enduring insults, the Dodgers did indeed lose Clemente. And he would spend the rest of his illustrious career with the Pirates instead of the Dodgers. At the time he was drafted, he was playing the outfield in the Puerto Rican Winter League alongside teammate Willie Mays, a team that is often thought to have been one of the best Winter League teams ever assembled. And he excelled that offseason, leading his team to the Caribbean Series title. He returned to Pittsburgh for spring training in 1955, a much improved player, ready to win a spot in the Pirates outfield immediately. But there's so many what-if questions here. What if the Dodgers had decided to keep Clemente on the Brooklyn roster those two seasons instead of sending him to Montreal? Would he still have advanced as a player to become the star that he did? I think so, because so much of his growth seems to have happened in the Winter League instead. But what if O'Malley hadn't screwed things up by pissing Branch Rickey off so much that he abandoned drafting John Rutherford and grabbed Clemente instead? Can you imagine having Clemente on those Dodger rosters of the 1960s? And from our last episode, I covered just how close Willie Mays may have been to being a Dodger. So what if Roberto Clemente and Willie Mays had formed the Dodger outfield together throughout the 1960s? The Dodgers of the 60s were a great team, but one thing they surely could have used more of was offensive production in the outfield. The Dodgers won four World Series titles between 1955 and 1972, the years that Clemente played. But would anyone have been able to stop them from winning even more with that team and him in the outfield? The Pirates won the World Series twice, in 1960 and 1971, but would they have won those without the leadership and play of Clemente? Luckily for Pirates fans out there, we'll never have to know the answer to that question, and we can keep the legend of Roberto Clemente firmly planted in the black and yellow of Pittsburgh. Thanks again to everybody for joining me to look at this incredible story of what might have been again for one of the star players of the major leagues. Join me next time when I continue this series with more stories. Until then, keep talking baseball, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you around.